Let's bring in uh, Paul Spiegel. He's joining us from Baltimore. He's the director of the Center for Humanitarian Health at Johns Hopkins University's Bloomberg School of Public Health. Thanks very much for speaking to us on the Al Jazeera News Hour. You recently edited and reviewed a uh, report on Venezuela's health crisis. In fact, you said that you were surprised by the magnitude of the crisis. Tell us why. Sure. Thank you, Darin, for having me on the program. Uh, it's, as your report just mentioned, it's astonishing the slide of the uh, health system in Venezuela from a strong functioning health system to a health system that's in catastrophe. Um, basic uh, items such as gloves, intravenous medication, intravenous uh, kits and intravenous medications, oral medications are no longer there. And that's one of the reasons we have over 4 million people now uh, f who have fled that country. And as, as Sarah was saying in her report, uh, the government in Venezuela has stopped publishing health statistics in 2017. So it can be uh, somewhat difficult to get accurate information as to what's exactly going on in the country and in the, in the correct numbers. Um, so how were you able to collate this data or uh, the, the team that worked on this report with you? Yeah. Um, we were able to, firstly, data is very difficult, and we believe much of the data we, uh, we reported on in April are, is an underestimation. But we were able to work with uh, Pan American Health, or, or look at the reports from Pan American Health Organizations, Centers for Disease Control. We also had private conversations uh, with physicians in Venezuela. And furthermore, we were able to get some data from the Venezuelans that were crossing the border into Colombia and Brazil, which were the two countries that we visited. Um, it's clear that uh, the, the Venezuelan government is not releasing data and, in fact, is telling their healthcare workers not to release data. And we are aware of some healthcare workers that have been detained and have lost their jobs by providing such data. Just about 24 hours ago, we uh, were hearing, in fact, we filed a report uh, that uh, Venezuela has now reopened a border with Colombia after being closed for uh, four months. Do you think that offers some sort of a reprieve for those who need the medical and humanitarian aid? This must be a good move. I hope so, but opening the border is one step. The, the big issue is will the government allow uh, the amount of massive amount of assistance that's needed? Uh, in the past, that has not happened. Um, we have seen an increase with, by the UN agencies and the International Federation of the Red Cross and Red Crescent but it's insufficient. Um, and I would like to also state clearly that humanitarian assistance should not have, uh, should not be political in nature and that it really should be helping everyone. It should be neutral, independent and impartial. Is it possible to sort of put a figure on the amount of humanitarian aid that is needed now for Venezuela, specifically actually uh, medical aid? It's difficult. Uh, it's, it's clearly uh, tens of millions of, of dollars, but it's very difficult until, and one of, one of the recommendations in our report is to have an independent uh, assessment and an evaluation of the healthcare situation in Venezuela. Because right now, we have some ideas, the numbers that you have uh, mentioned, but as we said, we really need a, an independent evaluation to understand the, the gravity, which we believe is quite severe, but also to come up with a, a strong estimate of what is truly needed. And what kind of response did you get for that request? Because in that report, you also called for international action. Um, I, we think actually there has been some, some movement, particularly by the United Nations. They have been uh, speaking about the crisis in Venezuela much more loudly. And it's been surprising that the, gravi the gravity of the Venezuelan crisis, when you compare to Syria and Yemen, is equally as big. But it hasn't been receiving enough attention. The UN has declared it to be a major emergency. Um, they have declared a uh, both UNHCR, the refugee agency, and the International Organization for Migration have a dedicated uh, senior person involved in trying to address the situation. So we have seen some movement. All right. But ultimately, this is still a political situation. Okay. Paul Spiegel, we thank you very much for joining us from Baltimore.